now's my moment. Is it? Now. What's this book? Rich, give me my personal time. This is, you know what this book is. It's Red Rising, isn't it? How'd you know? So th- this, <laughs> this next book, this first line is if, if, if God could craft a sentence. Okay, other than the Bible and all that. If, <laughs> I, I've seen Pierce Brown. That is one of God's best. That's, that's, he's a chiseled man. He is, he's thoughtful. He's funny. He's good looking. He's, ev- he's, he's everything you want to be. He, he is, yeah, yeah, yeah. How does it feel you'll <laughs> never be Pierce Brown? <laughs> just, just let me read the line. <laughs> Project Hail Mary. Perfect book. Perfect novel. Not a flaw, not a period, not a comma out of place. It's everything that you want from a sci fi book. And here's what's better. Welcome, welcome everyone to the Tudor Round Podcast. My name is Richard. My name is Austin. And Rich, you introduced us. What is this? That's my job. I introduce us sometimes. I just like when I do. <laughs> what <laughs> well, are we doing today? Tell us. Today we're doing another 21st lines of sci-fi books, and we're oh, going to yeah. rank them. But before we actually tell you the book, we're going to give you the n- name, see if you can guess along the way, and where you would rank it. So we'll try and be less biased. I do not know uh, what lines go with what books. This was all chosen by Austin over here. However, except. Except one. That was which my mother picked. Your Actually, m- my mother picked two. We already had one of them on the list. The other one we didn't. But yeah, so your mom came up with a surprise pick. I don't know the line for that one. But yeah. all the other ones, I know the lines, and then people can play along. Because last, this is a part two of our sci-fi first lines, where last time we had, as you can see here on our tier list, we have S, A, B, C, D, F tier. And I'll tell you what the bottom tier is in a second. But mm-hmm. you know, we always have something that's on the bottom of the bottom, the worst of the worst. But our previous S tier was Hyperion. Ah. And we also had 2001 A Space Odyssey next year, but Hyperion. The best. That first line. C- can you, okay, Rich, if you love it so much, recite it. Don't do that. Don't. <laughs> do you want me to read it again just to get yes, you in please, that feel? For me. La- last episode we had on this, it just, it just got us united. There, oh, yeah. as rarely are we united, but we're united on this. Okay, here's, here's the line of what all the other sci-fi book first lines have to be compared to. This is what must be beaten. The hegemony consul sat on the balcony of his ebony spaceship and played Rachmaninoff's prelude in C-sharp minor on an ancient but well-maintained Steinway while great, green, saurian things surged and bellowed in the swamps below. Perfect. Puts me in the mood. Puts me in the mood to read some sci-fi in some big spaceships and... Love it. Makes you feel high class. Oh yeah, you're part of the the oh, prestige. That is the reason I read books. It's not for the knowledge and entertainment that I get from them. Never. It's to feel superior to others. That's what sci-fi gives me. That's why I'm a sci-fi fan. I like lording it above others. You do like your sci-fi even over fantasy. Yeah, I do. Uh, if if I had to pick one, yeah, my favorite thing is sci-fi. Well, now here's where we're gonna we're gonna see what the bottom tier is for this one. I'm gonna I surprise I like the surprise. You know what I picked this time? Hmm. The bottom tier, below F tier, the worst books will go here. Are people who haven't subscribed to the channel? That's pre- oh god, <laughs> <laughs> have we fallen so low? <laughs> <laughs> Please, <laughs> no. oh god, we're such shills. For ourselves. <laughs> we I don't think once in our our po- we usually tell the Patreon stuff like that, but I don't think once we've said hey subscribe. Have we not? I don't think we've done that. That's good. I feel good about ourselves, and now I feel worse. Because <laughs> we've, oh, we've broken it. We've broken the rule. There it is. Uh, damn. Yeah. No. Oh, well, well, I broke the rule. You didn't break it yet. How about that? I feel good about that. Yeah, yeah. I, I can shift the blame. Well, you're going to feel even better, because I got the first line for you here. Give it to me. Now, you might know this first line, because mm. you've read sci-fi books, but most of these you won't know, but I, I, <laughs> I love this first line. Okay. You ready? Give it to me. Then you gotta, we got to rank it. Here we go. I'm pretty much fucked. <laughs> I don't know the name of this book. Yes, you do. Do I? Yes, you do. Wait. Come on. on. Think. Think, Rich. You love this book. You love this book more than life. Nope, not that one. I see. I see. Nope, 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 nope. Wait. Nope. Other way. Other way. Shift. Shift your mind to the left. Telepathically. <laughs> think. Think. This. Yeah. You're there. Richard. I don't know. What? 
before I say the book, then, what do you think about the line? Because not to get your bias in, it's saying, I'm pretty much fucked. What's that do for you? It's good, it's, but it's normal. I'm not expecting too much, like, top of seat. Blasphemy, it's the Martian! <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> How'd you forget? It's such a short line. How am I supposed to remember? <laughs> but I, I thought you'd get it just because the tone of Mark Watney. And that yeah, book is just yeah. straight up cursing. And he's always cursing. Yeah. It sets up the tone perfectly. But you did say C tier. I know. You are sticking with that? I am. It's a wonderful book. I love the book. Yeah. But it's a normal line. It does the you, job. It's good. Mark Watney and all these books, they're not writing a line. I, we've said this before. They're not writing a line to go like, oh, I can't wait to be on the tier list video for two to ramble. Exactly. <laughs> so no, I still rank the book. Hi. Yeah. S tier for me. I love it. It's one of my favorite things. But we're but first line, top of C. We're real okay, we're going top of C. That makes sense. Right I think above that's realistically. Right above three broader problem that we put on the last video up there. Yeah, okay. Sounds Let's, all right. Let's do that. All right. You ready for the second book? Okay. Well, this one's from your mom, and I don't know what the line is. <laughs> I'm excited. So Rich, you have this on your phone. Yep. And we're we're just gonna rank it from there. Yep. All right. Let's get it All out right. here. Let me get in the zone. Let me get in my critique mode now. Okay. I'm ready. Well, Corporal Westerberg, Dr. Henry Harris said gently, just why do you think you're a plant? Oh. <laughs> oh, Richard's mom. Good job. You know what? If you came, <laughs> if you brought that good? line, I would have to really be critical. Oh, okay. But your mother did this. And your mother's good. <laughs> I like how funny that is. <laughs> yeah. Say it once more. Say it once more. I'm, yeah. Well, Corporal Westerberg, Dr. Henry Harris said gently, just why do you think you're a plant? Now, here's the two ways I take this. Plant as in plant as in why are you, do you think you're a plant? Or you're planted in this organization. You're a spy. Or plant as in why do you think you're a vegetable? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that because you could take it two different ways. Yeah. I prefer taking it the way that that's vegetable. It's flora. Yeah. Yeah. It's that's more fun. fun. That's fun. That's real fun. That's a good one too. Nice. I, it's simple, but it's I like it a quite I'd, a bit. I'd say I, solid B tier. I do too. I'm thinking. Mm, let's go right below Dune above Blade Runner. That's what I'm thinking. I think so. Let, let's put it there. You want to read Blade Runner again if we can? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, we're going back. This is Blade Runner's first line. Uh, well, the book that inspired Blade Runner should be more accurately. Sure. And what was that book called? Uh, do oh, Androids do, Dream of Electric Sheep. That's it. Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep. Here's the first line for that. A merry little surge of electricity piped up. Uh, sorry, let me restart that. A merry little surge of electricity piped by automatic alarm from the mood organ beside his bed awakened Rick Deckard. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, They're about the same. They're about the same. I, I guess we'll put this just above it. Yeah. I, I like, so when we're looking at these first lines, if people are tuning in for the first time, we like to look if it's doing... First off, what emotion is it bringing out? Are you mm -hmm. curious to read on? But also, how many things is it moving? Is it moving forward? Some world-building aspect, character, plot, and all that. What I like about this line, it's doing a couple things where it makes you rethink the sentence. Exactly. It, That's cool. I, I'm, I'm no, okay, military wise, it, it's this kind of psychology sentence. He said gently, the, yep. uh, why do you think you're a plant? So I'm. Settings there. We know, yep. I'm now going, okay, this sci, how, how deep sci fi is this? Yeah. Because Fire Upon the Deep, where you have those vegetables or what do you call that species of sentient beings that are basically plants. Oh, They're yes. They're so freaking cool. <laughs> Fire Upon the Deep, recommend. It's a good read. Great book. Okay, let me put that uh, right below, later, or above. Where are we deciding? I think above. Above? Okay, above to Android's Dream of Electric Sheep. And we did Fire Upon the Deep last episode. We have it in top of A tier. That's a great line. That's, I think that's personally, that should be, a, I don't know why we did A tier. Well, that should go S. You know what? I won't argue it. We're on a new video, new times, yeah. new relationships. Okay. Not like meaning ours. Has oh, yeah. No, every video is a new relationship. I, I purge it after the <laughs> end of every video. We start fresh. All right. Ready for this next one? Give it to okay, me. Okay, here it is. This, this is going to be difficult to, to word out because it has, you know how some sci-fi books have a little intro blurb in the beginning with a lot of sci-fi jargon and then say the first sentence? Yeah. I'm going to give all that. Okay. Okay, ready? 
from the archives of Hain, transcript of Ansible document 01-01101-934-2-Gethen, to the stable of Alul, report from Genli AI, first Mobilian Genthen slash Winter, Hainish cycle 93, ecumenical year 1490-97. Okay, that's the that's the wonderful part. Now you want the first sentence? <laughs> give me the sentence. <laughs> Honestly, if I stop there, you'd give it us tier. But all right, we'll, we'll go on. Here we go. <laughs> I'll make my report as if I told a story, for I was taught as a child on my home world that truth is a matter of the imagination. Damn, I know this one. Do you? I, I've I've read this line. No way. I've read this before. You've read this? Yeah. I don't think you've read this author yet. Because this this author you've been really no. wanting to read. I don't think you've read this. Have I not read this? I don't think so. I'd be very impressed if you got it. Can you? Well, oh, bef damn. before you try to guess the book, what do you think about the line itself? So forget the jargon. The line says, I'll make my report as if I told a story. For I was taught as a child on my home world that truth is a matter of the imagination. I love it. I love that line. I, I think that's top of B, bottom of A. What do you Somewhere love about that there. line? Because I'm with you. There's something really special I like about it. Well, of course, the great line of right at the end that truth is a matter of the imagination great great line there gives gives me some dystopian vibes but also just a bit more of a whimsy to it i'm considering like where's his home world from where's his home is that earth is that somewhere else it gives me a lot more questions yeah. and gives me enough to go on i'm not super confused but i'm also have plenty of curiosity go for it but where are you putting it? I'm thinking top of B, bottom A. I'm thinking right around that range. Because you know what? I'm a little bit... I, I want me to read beyond the first sentence just because it's so good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Here it is. And then I want, I'll want. i tell you the book as well. I'll make my report as if I told a story. For I was taught as a child on my home world that truth is a matter of the imagination. The soundest fact may fail or prevail in the sty style of its telling like that singular organic jewel of our seas, which grows brighter as one woman wears it and, worn by another, dulls and goes to dust. Facts are no more solid, coherent, round, and real than pearls are, but both are sensitive. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> we can't judge the good... If we're judging the paragraph, S tier, right? Because yeah. the, the, uh. the analogy used there and how well it's written is freaking, it's a jewel, just like the jewel is described. Come on. Can I put it right above all systems red? Because I read the full thing, yeah. I'm going to be biased. I'm letting it happen. <laughs> I'm letting it happen. But right below but no, Hitchhikers. The, the first oh, yeah. line is great. I yeah. am judging oh, yeah. it by the first line. I'm Because I remember... It's going... Uh, it's going... So mm. right Oh, sorry. You probably see the name now. Do I you do see the now. Book? You spoiled me. The book is Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin. I got to read this book now. She's a legend. I know. And I haven't read anything by her. That's... Well, is Why? That's how have you not read I've a read single one by her? No, that's that's a disgrace, honestly. You haven't read it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Which of these books are yours? It's just I never get to bully you. I know it's uh, fine. <laughs> I understand the need to bully. It, I, it's a it's a deep need everyone has. Everyone has to find who they can bully, and then they let it out. <laughs> I wanna I wanna put a little asterisk here for all the viewers and for you. This mm -hmm. uh, Rich, I have I'm planning a month long prank on you. Okay, so that kind will, of ruins the ruins the no. Prank you just won't, you won't you won't see it coming. It's okay. gonna happen on this channel, and it's gonna be marvelous. But everyone will know this is the moment you can go back to where I warned you. It's coming. Okay, just so you know, yeah. I'm within striking distance. <laughs> <laughs> Rich, I'm I no longer have a prank planned for you. <laughs> I mean, like. I'm just looking at mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> for audio only. He literally, he literally punched me. I have a bruised eye. <laughs> uh, uh, gotta be faster than that. <laughs> you, gotta be, you gotta be quicker than that. <laughs> but that that line, fantastic. The the truth is a matter of the imagination. You get the character as a child was taught this very this lesson in a pretty brutal and realistic world. A world where you're saying this dystopian sense of truth is a matter of the imagination is. A more dystopian take on basically Discworld, because that is Discworld. Yeah, truth is a matter of the imagination, but perspective is the fun thing they play with, and this mm -hmm. perspective is probably a governmental thing. Or yeah. It's really neat. All right, want to go into the next book? 
Give it to me. Here you go. You're going to know this one. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I was so disappointed you didn't get the Martian. That, I'm, I've lost yeah. all hope. I've lost all Okay, but My this memory one... is not a steel trap. <laughs> Here it we go. Is Ready? It's a nice steel sieve. I feel like you said that to me. Who said that? Was that you're saying? Wrong person to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Good point. All right, ready? The sky above the port was the color of television tuned to a dead channel. This is Neuromancer. You got I, it. Know, I love this book. I actually genuinely like this book a lot. This Apparently was no one else did in our book club that we actually have. Once a month, if you want to join us, the description down below. For the month of February, was no, it? No, no, January. Oh, for this book? Th we did it last... No, we did this recently. Like Re three, oh. four months ago, something like that. But oh, it was man. controversial. Hmm. Where This month we're doing... We're doing... This is how you lose a time war. Join our Patreon. But this book, Neuromancer, we did, I think, over the summer. Oh, okay. And we discussed it, and it was very controversial. Some, Most people did not like it. I was one of them. I liked it quite a bit. You did it like was, it. It was real fun. It's cyberpunk, and since you know the book... Try to not lean that bias toward, toward the line. But hey, I didn't like the book and I like the line. Oh, the line's great because it perfectly encapsulates like the scene. Like it this scene this whole first line is trying to get you to imagine the world. Like just get give you a mental picture. Yeah. And it does it perfectly. Because how else would you describe like static from a TV? You can't you kind of can't. Like trying to get that yeah. image, you have to use the words, but it's an odd combination to describe a sky that yeah. way. Yeah. And so I immediate I know exactly what it's supposed to go for. I know we're going to go into a cyberpunk type of world. It's great. Visualization great is a 10 out of 10 on yeah. this. So purely just getting you to know where where you are, what the sky is. It's describing the sky in a way that you haven't heard before. Also, I don't know about you, but the sky that looks like TV static is a little spooky, a little creepy to me. Yeah. Not terrifying, yeah, yeah, yeah. just eerie. Mm. And that's what the book, I think, is trying to go for, tone-wise. Just eerie and yeah. wrong. I'm with you. Where, where, you. Wherever you want to put this, other than S tier. I don't think it's S tier worthy. Mm, I think above Hunger Games, below 1984. Honestly, I would even say above 1984. I think mm. it's one of those classic lines that I think it de describes a scene. 1984 sets you in the tone really, really well. Can you give me the uh, 1984's? lines 1984? Right, here we go. 1984's line. Sorry, we're not uh, cultured enough to know it off the top of my head. <laughs> it was a bright, cold day in April, and the clocks were striking 13. It's good. Mm. Uh, yeah. Let's above. put no answer above. Top of B. Top I of think B. So. Uh, there's an argument to BA. Yeah. Maybe we even push that up. But we'll, that's yeah. William Gibson's Neuromancer, which you recommend. I do. You would recommend okay. it more to cyberpunk I fans, right? I do not recommend it blindly to everyone. For real sci-fi, hard, like hard sci-fi fans, and you know who you are. Yeah. It's a great book. It seems like a necessary read for the cyberpunk genre. If you want your character study, <laughs> run far, far away from this book, <laughs> the other direction, and then start crying for help. <laughs> because this yeah. this book is fits a certain niche. Yeah, it's more... It takes a look at the society that this culture and the aspects of technology have on people's psyche and then kind of runs with that. Doesn't really give you characters with a character journey per se. Right. More of a, hey, look at how society, big old quotes, affects people. Right. And it does explore the sci-fi cyberpunk world and William Gibson's Neuromancer, I think, was the inspiration or one of the big inspirations for the movie The Matrix. Yeah. So that that is pretty cool. It's it's definitely a staple. It's one of those books mm -hmm. that you, I guess you should read if you're really interested in and in, if you love sci fi, read it. Yeah. yeah. Here's this this next one. I'm I didn't know this existed until one of our patrons, Curtis. Curtis recommended putting this on the list. And thank you for doing that because Oh, I, by I'm, the way, yeah, yeah, Alex yeah. Alex recommended Neuromancer to us on Patreon. Thank just you, Alex. wanted to give you a shout out to that. Hell Alex, yeah. it was a great recommendation. I know you and I were the only ones that liked Alex, it. Alex, thanks for the shitty recommendation. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and thank you, Alex. Okay, ready? It's okay. We could like the book together. Alex. It's fine. <laughs> but th this is the line. Mm -hmm. I, whew, I'm getting excited just looking at it. Okay. 
When Jesus of Nazareth hung and dying on his cross, the Vulcran passed within a year of his agony, headed outward. I have heard this line God before damn. on our Patreon, and I can't remember the book now, but I... Oh, Can Lord, you remember that's the author? Good. No, I... Oh, wait. Is this Stephen King? No. Damn no, it. No, no, no. It's not, but it's just as surprising, I think. Give it to me. It's Night Flyers by George R. R. Martin. Oh, it's, yes. It's, his sci- it's one of his sci-fi books. Everyone knows him for Game of Thrones, but they forget he wrote all this other stuff, too. This is a good line. It's a, it's a great line. When you start with, one Jesus of Nazareth, the, whoa, 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 I thought we were in sci-fi. What's what are going we on here? <laughs> and so it just it throws you for a loop. What, what's that leave you with? What kind of feeling? What kind of tone? Are you surprised this is George R. R. Martin? Yeah, I, definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But mm, it gives me the feeling of a war. It's not too grand in scope. Right. It's still localized to the human experience and to Earth, but it's a little past it. That mm. we're, it's a little past. I, I don't, I don't know. Speeding by Earth's place is that kind of giving you the the odd perspective of where we are? That well, describing, you know, Jesus dying on the cross is kind of just this passing moment. Well, maybe. It could be more epic in the, in the sense that saying when Jesus of Nazareth hung dying on the cross, the Vulcan passed within a year of his agony headed outward. As in, maybe the Vulcan's a spaceship yeah, headed outward, and it was just giving us a time frame of when this was happening, and then it has nothing to do with Earth. That could be the case. That could be. I, I have no clue, but it all depends on what the hell the... It's spelled V-O-L-C-R-Y-N. Don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. It just lives, it leaves a lot of mystery. Mm-hmm. Where do you think, uh, thinking of putting this one? I think somewhere in B. I think somewhere below, Mm. I would say above, we just read Do Android Dream of Reckless Street for reference. I would say right above that. And and below the um, the Piper, the book that your mom recommended. I agree. Okay, let's put it there. Mm -hmm. You agree? What is going on with you? Hey, when you get it right, you got it right. Thanks, Rich. (laughs) Man. All right, ready for this next book? By the way, you get it right when you agree with me. (laughs) (laughs) Wrong all the other times. Yes, exactly. It's a great measure to have. Here's the next book. What's two plus two? One more. Oh, I already know. Oh, no, you know the book? I read this book too recently. Uh, I I think you read this last month. Give it so for the sake of the audience, I know this one, but give the rest like give okay. it like the two sentences to just okay give it the feeling. What's two plus what's two plus two? Something about the question irritates me. I'm tired. I drift back to sleep. This is Project Hail Mary. Arguably <sighs> near to perfect sci-fi book. Is this one of your favorite novels? Yeah. It is. <laughs> I read it recently, and it just blew my socks off the. Road. I was like, I was going into it, going, "I love the Martian. How can I get like more Martian than the Martian?" And then I was like, "Oh wow! So I can have all of the positives of the Martian plus all the things that weren't as good with it. And I, he could just improve everywhere, and it gives everything to me. No faults. Would That's you pretty amazing? Would you put the stamp that Project Hail Mary is a perfect book? Yeah, I'll put it there. Wow. Yeah, no. I got to read Come this Come at book. me. Project Hail Mary. Perfect book. Perfect novel. Not a flaw. Not a period. Not a comma out of place. It's everything that you want from a sci-fi book. And here's what's better. Is it's accessible to everyone. Mm. There's a lot of sci-fi books. Like Neuromancer, I don't recommend to everyone. It's my thing. It's not going to be everyone's thing. I think Project Hail Mary, everyone will get something out of it. Everyone will enjoy it's not something that is sectioned off only for hard sci-fi readers, yet it will please them. It oh. gives enough of like the hard science learning. You feel smarter when reading this book. I, I'm going to have to pitch Austin here on reading this book. It's a mandatory read. I'm, I'm convinced. You know yeah. I'm convinced. That, that's a great pitch. I will read this book. Good. Where would you put the first line for this book? First first line yeah. or like the first thought? We'll give you the first thought. Well, well, what I read all the way from I Drift Back to Sleep. I really like it, um, but I'm going to put just at the bottom of B. I would, 
bottom would be I would put it below the Martians first line. See, because I, I think the Martians first line sets the tone better because they, they they're very similar in that they're quick. This one's we're going. What's two plus two? Something about the question irritates me. I'm tired. I drift back to sleep. We're, we are doing longer there too. Versus the Martians was I'm pretty much fucked, which gives you yeah. the character of okay. This character curses sets up your tone. It's not a it's not a bad quick line versus this one. Not neither of these are bad. But you see what I mean. The Martians gives me more of the character and tone more than this one does. Here here's also something that I want focused on is. What's two plus two is quotations like some something or someone is speaking. Yeah. And then our character like says something about that bothered me. I went back to sleep. One, I think it does get the tone of the character of just this kind it of does. little yeah. bit of laziness. The why? Why is someone asking what's two plus two? Like this is kind of a weird question. Like it, it could be a bunch of different things. Well, but as in the context? Martians one could be why is he pretty much fucked? You know? Yeah. I'm, I just think that does a little better, you know? But the main thing is what I'm just looking at a little bit uniqueness. Just I'm pretty much fucked is kind of that's there. That could that line could fit in a bunch of other books. You know what else is pretty much fucked? Hmm. Our ad revenue because I think we said that word like twenty you times. You can bleep it. <laughs> you can you can be a good editor and beep 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 beep. Okay, you could try. I'll I'll bleep most of what you said just because. Good. <laughs> <laughs> you have too much. How about just top of C then above the Martian? You know, I disagree, but I'll do it just to just to satisfy your inner ego. Good. <laughs> My ego does like to be stroked. Every now and then, uh, you know, you like to. You, Rich goes to our YouTube comments to boost his ego, then goes, "Oh, that's depressing." <laughs> it's like, oh, never mind. <laughs> mostly, mostly the TikTok comments. No, here's the thing. <laughs> A good, healthy ego is a shield to negative comments on the internet. Because you look, you scroll through, and you look at him, and you go, hey, that person agrees with me and is giving me praise. Yeah, that's totally true. Totally right. Validated. And then you get a negative comment, and you go, that person just must be an idiot. <laughs> Who would ever leave that? Like, oh, God. They're clearly your ego, wrong. Your ego clearly shields you from that kind of negativity. Because anyone who's against you is clearly just a moron. It's really nice being me sometimes on the internet. That whole paragraph you said that would be a great first paragraph for a novel. <laughs> into, <laughs> into introspective of a psychopath. <laughs> you know, it's great. It's you just listen to yourself, <laughs> ignore all else, and move forward. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Comply. <laughs> all right, ready for the next book? Yeah, give Here it. Here we to go. Me. No way you know this one. No way you know this line. So this will be completely unbiased. Okay. All right. Barry Sutton pulls over into the fire lane at the main entrance of the Poe building, an Art Deco tower glowing white in the illumination of its exterior scones. It's good. You'd say good. How I don't remember the line now. You just said it. It went in one ear and right out the other. Well, name, that, like, name one thing you remember about that line. Sparkling white spires? Was that in there? Nope. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> there, there was no sparkling, but there was glowing. There was white. Something was white. And it wasn't spires. It was scones. So you had some of the... I'm just saying, like, the line... There's something wrong with the line if you can say it and it's immediately forgotten. You are, I don't know why. You, you, we need a character study in two. This is great. <laughs> this is, You are... I, I, I mean this genuinely. Yeah. Who the hell are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, look, there are, in my sieve-like brain, yep, yep. there are things that are too big to fit through the hole, so they stay in my brain. Mm -hmm. And then other things are just too small, like grains of sand, and they go right through. All my comments, basically. Exactly. Also, this book seems like the first line is just like grains of sand. It falls through the sieve-like brain. Well, this book is Recursion by Blake Crouch. Who's that? That's that's my knowledge on Blake Crouch. <laughs> that's that's uh, shows you what uh, we know. We're, we're insulted some fans out there. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Blake Crouch fans. But this this line, since it was sold, let's not even read it again, and let's honestly put a D. Sure, we need some D. We need some Ds. Let's put it below Gideon. I like Gideon. Yeah, below Gideon. Which, by the way, we do have divergent above Isaac Asimov, which is great. I oh, love it's it. Wonderful. It's wonderful, <laughs> isn't it? I love seeing it. <laughs> it does make my heart happy. <laughs> You know what? And if people disagree, we're just going to put that in the people who haven't subscribed one. Yeah. 
I dare you. You ready for the next one, Rich? Give it to me. Now's my moment. Is it? Now. What's this book? Rich, give me my personal time. This is, you know what this book is. It's Red Rising, isn't it? How'd you know? So th- this, <laughs> this next book, this first line is if, if, if God could craft a sentence. Okay, other than the Bible and all that. If, <laughs> I, I've seen Pierce Brown. That is one of God's best. That's, that's, he's a chiseled man. He is, he's thoughtful. He's funny. He's good looking. He's, ev- he's, he's everything you want to be. He, he is, yeah. 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 How does it feel? You'll <laughs> never be Pierce Brown. <laughs> just, just let me read the line. <laughs> Since you know the book, I'm going to pick it off the shelf, okay? Okay. So obviously this is Red Rising. And there's, there's a couple different first lines. I'll read the first line that's before chapter one. It's the prologue line, okay? okay. This, is, this is before you even read chapter one. I would have lived in peace, but my enemies brought me to war. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's okay. You bastard. <laughs> <laughs> and then here's the other first it's line. It's kind of so, just generic. It's, it's there. Bef- before you judge that, okay? Now, do you think we should judge that first line? Or here's the first line of chapter one, okay? The first thing you should know about me is I am my father's son. They're both real generic. They're fine. And then here's this other line at the end, the, the, the first line of the second paragraph. Okay, You're keep fishing on Mars. There's not much gravity, so you have to pull the feet to break the neck. They let the loved ones do it. That's the good line. <laughs> that's the line. That's that, the hook. That's the, the first. other lines were fine. That's the first line of the second paragraph, though. So we have to judge. I think we should judge the prologue one, which is the line: "I would have lived in peace, but my enemies brought me to war. Brought me war." Seems generic to me. It's, it's generic, fine. yeah. That's about as generic as I could think. All right, give me what? What? T- oh, we're struggling to put the red rise. There we go. What? What tier are you thinking for Red Rising here? For the for the opening line, I would have lived in I'll, peace, but my enemies brought me war. Uh, I'll give you above three body problem in C tier. You'll give me that. I'll give you that. Give me bottom B. Just I'm. Um, just give me bottom B. Bottom B. Just, just give it. <laughs> just, just please, <laughs> please. This is all I have. I'll give you top a C. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I could negotiate that high. We're taking it, baby. Here we go. <laughs> let's let's go to the, the, yeah. The book is better than that, but look. Okay, it's not our fault that he has the hook on the second paragraph. That's the hook line. All the other stuff is like, ah, yes, generic hero, like, ah, the grizzled hero, and ah, he's the noble warrior, and I'll say, yeah, okay. The pull the feet to break the neck one, that is an S tier for me. I love that line. I love it, too. if we're just judging... If it was that line, I'd agree with you with S. You would? Yeah, I would put it in S with you. Okay. But we got to be fair here. Actually, we don't have to be fair, but... (laughs) (laughs) We have to to feign fairness. Exactly. We have Truth make... is in the imagination, as, exactly. as Ursula K. Le Guin once said. We have to let people believe that mm. the system isn't rigged, when secretly, behind closed doors, it's all rigged, guys. All of it's rigged. Why vote? Because what's Democracy cringe? Democracy is cringe. There you go. There's your line. There's your line. <laughs> Next book time. You ready? Yeah. I have the first line, then I have the paragraph, because the first line doesn't give too much. Okay. But I'll give it regardless, okay? Only fools... Climb to the surface. I'm going to need a little bit more. Okay. Only fools climb to the surface. It was stupid to put yourself into danger like that, my mother always said. Not only were there near constant debris showers from the rubble belt, but you never knew when the krill would attack. You know the book? I gave a bit much away. Gave a bit much away. You know the book? This is uh, Brandon Sanderson's uh, Star... Star... I could just look. <laughs> Skyward. Yes, <Yeah>, Skyward. <laughs> Skyward series by... Bre- oh, not the Skyward series, but Skyward. Is that book one, Skyward? Or is that the series name? Skyward. Skyward's the book name. What's the series name? Uh, Skyward Saga? I don't know. The Skyward series. Oh, it's literally called the Skyward series. Oh, there yeah. we go. So what do you think of that first line? If, if we're just judging only fools climb to the surface. It's not a bad line on its surface like i wouldn't say f tier no no uh i'd probably put it if we're just judging him 
by that on its own? Just on only fools climb to the surface. Bottom of sea? I would even say, I, I want to compare this to Divergence first line. Okay. Because to see if it should go below D. Because here's, here's what Divergence first line is, okay? Mm-hmm. There is one mirror in my house. That's better. I think that is better because it gives you more of a question. Yeah. This one, it's very, it, hey, nothing to be said about the book. I haven't read the book, but if we're just judging that first line. Am I giving me Gideon again? Gideon? Okay. Gideon's is, in the myriadic year of our Lord, the 10,000th year of the king undying, the kindly prince of death, Gideon Nav, packed her sword, her shoes, and her dirty magazines, and she escaped from the house of the ninth. I love that line. Why is it in D? Last video, you said how much you hated the line. No, I didn't. Roll the clip, Austin. <laughs> I like the line a lot. I, here's what I remember. You read the line and went, that's not the good line. Here's the real good line. You pulled the book off the shelf and read the back of the book's first I mean, that's, line. That's a good line. Okay, want to move it up above? Let's go top of D with it. Move top it of D. All yeah. right, top of D with that, and then let's put, let's put Skyward right below Divergence. How about that? And above, yes. wait, above Frankenstein? You want to hear Frankenstein's first line again? Yeah. Okay, here's, here's Frankenstein's first line. A big, oh, that's, that's Frank Herbert's Dune. Whoops. When I typed in Frank on Google Docs, it went to Frank. Okay, here we go. I am by birth a Genovese, and my family is one of the most distinguished of that republic. Below. Below Frank. Below, okay. Okay, out of respect. Out of respect. We'll put it right there. And right above Recursion, which we recently read. Mm-hmm. Not read, but read, read their first, the first line for that. So is the Skyward series good? Do you recommend it? Yeah, it's fun. Uh, it's not breaking any molds, but it's a good casual read. Uh, it's for sci-fi. It's kind of light sci-fi. Light just, sci-fi. Just kind of like Red Rising type of deal. Like it's not. I know hard you didn't sci-fi. mean that as an insult. You you mean light sci-fi as in it's, it's not soft. It's soft sci-fi. Like, like soft versus hard magic and fantasy. Basically, there are ships. It is future esque. Yeah. There is technology that kind of basically works like magic, and it functions. That's that's all you get. You know, like you don't get any of that hard, weird, metaphysical sci-fi. None of that stuff. I see. Red Rising is too simple for you to like it. Yeah, mostly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it does fit your personality. Yeah. I just want a world I can chew on. I don't want a world that, like, I already get it. Like, I, it, you present it to me and I understand. And it's like, okay, cool. I want something where I don't I question things. You want to get to the bones. I want to get to the bones. I want to be confused mm. a little bit. I want some confusion in my sci-fi. If I already understand everything right from the get-go, is it sci-fi? Then you're, oh, that's why Red Rising is compared to fantasy books a lot because it has your character first, very much well, focused on. Yeah, yeah it's character first, but if focus a technology on that the comes point. out, it's mm-hmm. just kind of like if they introduce a new thing, a in new Rising, weapon. Yeah. You just kind of go, yeah, of course. Technology, right. Why not? Mm-hmm. Like some thing of a bobber. It does X. You go, okay, why not? Anything could fit versus something like a fire upon the deep. Things are justified there and like you have to really try and fit it into this world and everything fits into a right niche and you can't just put anything into that world because it's more inter it's more it's craft if it's crafted better it's more world first as well yeah i get you all right here's the next line the deliverator belongs to an elite order a hallowed subcategory i'm not gonna like can i say this rich before you give comment Mm -hmm. i don't understand the line could you help me? Could you help explain that line for me? The deliverer sounds like the, it's a deli- title. The deliverator, yeah, belongs to an elite order, a hallowed subcategory. It so that's th- the part I'm struggling with. A hallowed subcategory. Uh, Are they saying the the elite belongs to an elite order? So the elite order is the elite order a, a, just a subcategory is, or something? There is an elite order. Yeah, and the deliverator is a subcategory into into this order. It is a division of this order that is more secretive and grim. What do you think of that? It's fine. But it is a little confusing. Yeah. I like I, confusing. Though. <laughs> it would get me. <laughs> but. So where, where would you put this on the list? Do you want to put it top of F? Honestly, yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> What's the book name? Let's let's keep Isaac Asimov on the bottom. Let, let's keep <laughs> let's keep him company. <laughs> the the book name is Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson. They made a movie on this. Did they? Yeah. Did you see I the movie so. or just I think I saw the movie. It was pretty good. It's okay. like fine. So maybe just, I'm thinking something else, but let's see. Uh, so Snow Crash we're putting top of us, but Snow Snow Crash movie. I'm looking right now. Uh, TV movie kind of comes up, directed by Joe Cornish. Uh, has uh, Captain America was the star? Captain America. Yeah. Chris, oh, maybe I'm Chris, thinking, Chris no, Evans. No, no, no. Yeah, um, different. Yeah, different, different thing. thing different thing. Okay. Let's go on to the next one. Yep. Okay. This one, I might need to say more than the first line again, but I'll just say the first sentence, and you give me a reaction. Mm-hmm. It is possible. I already had some presentiment of my future. Would you like more? I like it already, Mm. but I want more. Okay. This book has been highly recommended by patrons, commenters. People have recommended this book, so maybe that will help you think of what it is. It is possible I already have some presentiment of my future. The locked and rusted gate that stood before us with wisps of river fog threading its spikes like the mountain paths remains in my mind now as the symbol of my exile. That is why I have begun this account of it with the aftermath of our swim in which I, the torturer's apprentice Severian, had so nearly drowned. Oh, this is the shadow... Oh, shoot. The Shadow something. Yep, you got it. Shadow. Keep going. Keep The Shadow what? It's not The Shadow Rising. No. No, no, no. I'm nearly done with that book here. (laughs) No, no, no. Uh, Shadow. The Shadow's Apprentice. Yes. There we go. I Uh lied. It's not that. It's the Book of the New Sun. You idiot. (laughs) Aw. It felt so mean. I just... Take that out of you could put put this clip in <laughs> put, put this clip in an elementary school and be like, kids, don't do this. This is this is cyberbullying. Not cyber I did it in person. That's that's very IRL. Good. This, this is this is bullying. Don't no, no, Richard. No. Oh. Don't play innocent. <laughs> <laughs> I did. The more the more I got you hooked. Oh, no. I'm I'm just such a school bully of when <laughs> I'm mean all the time the minute someone has slightest bit of pushback. Like, oh, play the victim. Oh, 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 oh how no. could you? <laughs> Bartholomew. I don't know. That feels like a a victim. Do you name. call me Bartholomew? I just feel like that's a victim's name of bullying. <laughs> if your name's Bartholomew, you're just a target. You're having a hard time in life. Yeah. I get it. That and Eugene. Oof. Eugene. Eugene. Eugene's having Porter. a. I'm so sorry, all you Eugenes out there. First 20 years of your life, you could scratch those off. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's character development right there. Yeah. You're going you're gonna to be something you in know, your 20s. I trust the Eugene. They've been through it. <laughs> They've been through something. You know what? I trust them because you know they had they studied during high school. They had to. Yeah. Because there's no other way they're getting... There's no, there's no way they had like a real bussin like sh- social life. <laughs> no, no way. Bussin social life. <laughs> Imagine if you're out on the field and you're like, I need something quick. Are you going to ask Eugene or Matt? Ugh. Matt. Matt. Matt flunked some of his classes. Yeah. Eugene went to everyone. Mm -hmm. Matt's a failure. Eugene's the standard, okay? (laughs) This is the book of the new son (laughs) by Gene (laughs) Wolfe. I I didn't do that on purpose. (laughs) I swear on my life. Maybe it threw... Like maybe it was subconsciously in my head, but Gene Wolf, <laughs> not you, Gene not Wolf. Gene Wolf wrote this he's book. Close. Honestly, Gene Wolf, he's probably been through some stuff. Let's be nicer to Gene. <laughs> but what do you think of that line? I'll remind you of the first line. It's it is possible I already had some presentiment of my future. That I like enough already. You like that? Okay. Probably mm, above Isaac Asimov and C. If we were to take the rest of it in context, I'd probably put it a bit higher. Let's keep it that, but let's put it, yeah, let's put it below The Martian and Project Tell Mary. Okay. And their openers. Let's go above Three Body. Three Body, right above that. Okay. What do you think? Okay. Put it right there. And then we've got our next book. Are you ready for this next one, Rich? Give it to me. Okay. 
this book I read, and I so I haven't read it since I was a kid, but I loved it as a kid. Oh, okay. I really did. Okay, here's the first line. It was almost December, and Jonas was beginning to be frightened. Want me to give the next couple lines in that? Give the yeah, because okay. I think I do know it. I want, I want to see if you can guess it, okay? I'm, ex- I'm excited to see this. Because I see your mind really spinning here. It was almost December, and Jonas was beginning to be frightened. No, wrong word, Jonas thought. Frightened meant that deep, sickening feeling of something terrible about to happen. Is this the giver? Yes. Hey, yeah, that's there we great. go. That's great. I'm hey, impressed. That the giver yeah. stuck. It's too big to fit through the hole in the sieve. There you go. It's stuck in there. there uh, look at you. <laughs> well, well, did you read the giver? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Of course. You know the line. Did you have to read it in school as well? Yeah. I think I had to read it in eighth grade. Probably but, the same for me. And I do an essay on it and everything. Which luckily I really liked the book. Yeah, it was cool. I'm surprised. I'm surprised my New Mexico, like public school <laughs> made me read this <laughs> why, why are you surprised it's a good book and like <laughs> seems like because i'm going off of yours yours your school had standards right my school had you, you know a bunch of a bunch of mats <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of mats were at your school <laughs> i was about to say something different but that's fine <laughs> mats are also yeah Matt, what the hell were you about to say? Yeah, I'll tell you off. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> well, what do you think of not just the giver, the first line of the giver? It's a good line. It was almost December, and Jonas was beginning to be frightened. It's good, but it's not anything special. We got to go D tier with it. I think so. We both like the book. Below Divergent. Yeah, because that the only one mirror in my house thing is a neat hook. Yeah, it's neat hook. Let's go Divergent. Yeah. Go divergent. We we're gonna start reading more, m- well, not that kind, not kind of YA books. But I don't know why my mind went here. But A Court of Thorn and Roses, the the books people don't think we would like. I want to read more of those. Oh yeah, I've I'm still have it on my show. I bought Fourth Wing. We are going to we read Fourth absolutely Wing. Absolutely will, and I I want to like it because that inner oh yeah that inner thing in me is like no. Nah. All the people on Discord saying like oh you're not gonna like it, you're not gonna like it. And I'm going you know what? Just I'm, just because you said you. that. I'm going to like That's going to be my new favorite book. I'm going to love the book. I know it. Yeah. I'm going to make myself love the book. The inner contrarian is just going, no, I love it. It's the best, actually. It's the best written book. I haven't even read it. Perfect. (laughs) Hey, it has black fringes on the cover. Like, it looks nice. It does. I got the special edition. It has a dragon. Can't go go wrong with dragons unless it's... uh, Name of the wind. Unless it's... Yeah, for you. (laughs) (laughs) All right, here's the next book. Yeah. And this is a must read for us. We must okay. read this at some point. And by the way, if you notice, The Giver isn't exactly huge sci-fi, but it's categorized as sci-fi because it has that dystopian element in a futuristic world where mm-hmm. you, you remember the setting of The Giver. Yeah. So it's not exactly what you'd think when you think sci-fi. Is that the same for this next one? I think so. I haven't read the book, but I think it's similar. because I, I really mm-hmm. don't know much about it, but it's a book that you for sure know but have not read. Okay. Here's the first line. We slept in what had once been the gymnasium. Hmm. Is this what you, one I have on my shelf? No, you don't. You don't. It's one of those very popular books, but have not read it. We haven't talked about it. This is. What do you think about big, the one? So you're. It, it's a huge in, book. Huge book. Sci fi. Yeah, I don't know how sci fi it is, though. I know so very little about this book. But it's a big book. Big popular book. Very popular. Is it new or old? Old. Ugh. Hmm. What book? Well, the final, you know, but it's, just, it's not 21st it's century. Big. You're going to have to give it to me. I don't think I know. Before I give it to you, do you want to judge the line before you get any yeah, bias? Yeah, judge the so line. The line first. is, we slept in what had once been the gymnasium. Just going off that line. What do you think? Mm, I think below... Below uh, Skyward, actually. Below Skyward... Okay, I like it does its job, but it's just, yeah. My me knowing the title might make is making me want to put it above Skyward, but oh. it's The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. Oh, from nineteen eighty five, it came yeah, out. Yeah, no, so that's you know this book. Eh, it's not sci fi; it's dystopian. It's a, okay that so it's kind of similar to The Giver or 
Yeah, yeah. In that in that way. So maybe it was my bias, but I liked I liked the line a bit. I liked it more than just thinking, all right, because we slept in what had what <laughs> I can't even say now. We slept in what had once been the gymnasium. Leads a more curious question than Skyward does for me. I think mm. it's where do we have Skyward in D tier? Yeah. I'm thinking close to the di- divergent line. It kind of reminded me of that, of there's only one mirror in my house. Or there, that adds a lot more questions than like we once been in the gymnasium. I'm just kind of like, yeah, okay. Things Let's put it right below good. that. Eh. And right. ab- above, we just read The Givers, which was, it was almost December and Jonas was beginning to be frightened. I think it does more than that. So let's go in between. Sure. All right, all right. We haven't had to put any in the bottom of the bottom tier yet. This is we're running out of we're running Sci-fi out of books here. Sci-fi is just better, apparently. We had a few in the fantasy uh, tier. We, I think we pushed some down just to get uh, one okay. in there. Yeah, which we might have to do soon. <laughs> so we'll see. Here we go. Isaac Asimov. <laughs> <You> <laughs> <maybe> just pushed <laughs> down. Them down. We got six more books. Okay. It's getting serious. Here we go. Current born, wave flung. Tugged hugely by the... Let me restart that. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to say that was your glasses? No, no. It's just... I want to make sure I didn't spell or when I was transferring it from book to, to there. So let's, let's see. Current born, wave flung, tugged hugely by the whole might of ocean, the jellyfish drifts in the tidal abyss. Can I say the second sentence as well to give more... It's a complete thought, so I'll, I'll give more. Okay. Current born, wave flung, tugged hugely by the whole might of ocean, the jellyfish drifts in the tidal abyss. The light shines through it, and the dark enters it. People who haven't subscribed to here. <laughs> give, give me I why. I just don't like it. It's both pretentious and also not really <laughs> saying cool stuff. I, I'm just not... I'm not down. I love you not knowing the book. This is yeah, great. This I is so, this is so know. great. I don't like it. It's The Lathe of Heaven by Ursula K. Le Guin. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> She's you, apparently a real hit or miss for me. You love the other line, but this one didn't do it for you. What what missed about this is too pretentious for pretentious Richard? I know. What? I guess not. That's just, a hard bar. I guess it's just too confusing and just I don't get the picture. Current it, born, wave flung. Tugged hugely by the whole might of ocean, the jellyfish drifts in the tidal abyss. The light shines through it, and the dark enters it. Yeah, I have a blank running for the image a blank? of my head. Oh, you got at least no. No, 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 no. When it when you read the line, a lot of these do a great job of yep. putting a picture in your head. Yep. I have no picture in my head for this one. It just really. Well worded together, but it seem doesn't really describe much of a good image to me. Let's describe the jellyfish yeah. and the perspective of the jellyfish going through the ocean. Look, and you read the whole paragraph; it'll probably be better. To me. <laughs> Fair, but as I, a first I line, gotta push eh. back on the people who haven't subscribed. I gotta push back there. You do? Uh, yeah, I get something in there. Let's go Why up not this one. Let's go up to bottom of C. Bottom of C, that's a large jump. Of course it, because it's not that bad of a line. <laughs> it's, it is not that bad. It's describing it well. I guess. I, I, the confusing part, maybe saying it out loud, so reading it versus seeing. Here, I'll show you it. Maybe it helps Oh, without without spoiling the next line or what I, that is. I can focus to not read Here it. you go. That, that right there. Does it look better on screen? Current born, wave flung, tugged hugely by the whole might of ocean. The jellyfish drifts in the tidal abyss. The light does it does it read better when you look at it? I guess, but eh, doesn't interest me. Ah, oh, damn. Top of D. Let's let's meet there in the somewhat middle. Above Gideon. Below Gideon. I'll, All right. I'll Ab- Above Gideon it is. All right. Next below. one. Below. Below. You hit me once this episode, I'll go below. <laughs> 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 All right, next one. Here we go. For a week, Mr. R. Childen had been anxiously watching the mail. Do you want more? I do, but that line as it is, probably somewhere in... D, right? 
somewhere in D. D. Yeah, we'll we'll have to figure out where, but Maybe just below, that line alone. Below the giver, probably. Right, these these authors aren't going like, oh, let me make the perfect first line. They're writing a whole page, then chapter, then book. That's supposed to be great. So here, here's the full full paragraph. For a week, Mr. R. Childen had been anxiously watching the mail, but the valuable shipment from the Rocky Mountain states had not arrived. As he opened up his store on Friday morning and saw only letters on the floor by the mail slot, he thought, I'm going to have an angry customer. I like it. It's a good start to the book. I would continue reading. Just well written. Just I like a, it. But I'm still going to say below the giver. I'm with you. I'm just going to go somewhere in that ballpark. Let's go there because this one is actually, I mean, it's Philip K. Dick. Oh. The Man in the High Castle. Uh, which I believe the concept of that book, because it was made into a TV show, is if the Nazis won World War II. Correct yeah, me if I'm wrong. And they split the United States half. Nazi Germany, half Japan. Yes. And I think this takes place in California with Japanese occupied, I think. But it's an alternative history Mm -hmm. sci-fi book, considered sci-fi. I like it. It it does a fine job, but just we have other people that... Not a crazy first line. Nothing nothing to write home about. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for this next one then? Give it to me. Okay. One minute, it was Ohio winter. With doors closed, windows locked, the panes... The panes blind with frost, icicles fringing every roof, children skiing on slopes, housewives lumbering like great black bears in their furs along the icy sheets. Let me say it once more since I slipped up in the middle there. Go ahead, but I already like it. One minute it was Ohio winter with doors closed, windows locked, the panes blind with frost, icicles fringing every roof, children skiing on slopes, housewives lumbering like great black bears in their furs along the icy sheets. That provides a perfect image. Yeah. Image-wise, like... Visualizations there. You don't know... It's not mentioning a character yet, but it's just describing pure setting. It's it's doing... You know what it's doing? Bottom of B? I w- no, me? I was going to say very similar to 1984. Mm. The clock strikes 13... It, it, it's giving that... Se- or Neuromancer. It's very similar to Neuromancer. Yes. Because the Neuromancer's picture... You're getting a a descriptive scene of the sky you're understanding the sky what this is doing is describing you know your ohio winter and the little villager area with i like the i especially like the way that the the housewives were described like great black bears in their furs yeah that's a great yeah. that's a great oh i like mm-hmm. it. bottom a bottom of a bottom Jesus, a. that's a large jump i, I think i uh, i think neuromancer a, a bunch of the things there's better <laughs> i think it's on the same scale as Neuromancer, but just does something a little bit more for me. It does something a little bit more because it not only describes it well, it gives a little bit of personality. It describes the weather, the people, the setting. Oh, yeah. It just seems kind of normal to me. Oh, I like, like it. it. It's good. It, it gives me a cozy feeling. Yeah, cozy feeling. That's all nice. And Neuromancer but... gives me a scary feeling. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> How about Below Dune? All right, give me, give me on par with Neuromancer. Go right below Neuromancer. Give me that. Give me that. Right above 19. How about I read 1984 again? Okay. And then we compared that line to 1984s, okay? It was a bright, cold day in April, and the clocks were striking 13. See, that's why I like this more. Below. Below? Below. Below 1984s? Yeah. You want to read Hunger Games? For it to go below that no, one, too? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you keep reading off ones, it's just going to start <laughs> dropping. Do you take below 1984, or do you open door <laughs> number two? <laughs> okay, 1984 is describing also weather and setting, getting you in the ominous tone of the clock striking 13. It's a great it's a first line. line. It's, it's great. It stays in your head. It is great, yeah. of course, but this is also describing weather and setting, and I think it just does it a little bit better. Oh, also, do you want to know what the book is? Yeah, go ahead. It's The Martian Chronicles by Ray Bradbury. Fantastic. Let Below me say, 1984. Let me, let me say it once more. Let me let me get you. Okay, go imagine ahead. this. It's it, imagine it's it's cold outside. The you're line si- you're is sitting, su- the line is supposed to give me the description. Oh, I know. Not I, I'm just saying. I'm getting you in the feeling. I feel like you're sitting oh, okay. down. You're sitting down. You got your book out. You got your coffee next to you. Mm-hmm. Fireplace across there. You're with your kids. Somehow you somehow convinced a woman to get near you within 10 feet. Yeah. Somehow. But anyways, we're talking 20 years down the line. That's called having a podcast. <laughs> when, when she heard that, she's like, <sighs> oh, yeah. All, all the ladies know. <laughs> all the ladies know. Like the, 
the most attractive thing a man can have as a podcast. Oh, you talk about sci-fi books that are extremely just male-oriented and... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready for this? Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> One minute it was Ohio winter with doors closed, windows locked, the panes blind with frost, icicles fringing every roof, children skiing on slopes, housewives lumbering like great black bears in their furs along the icy sheets. That gives me home right there. Nice. D- don't say it. Below Hunger Games. Damn you! <laughs> Uh, we're doing rock, paper, scissors for this of whether it goes above or below 1984. Okay. Give me that, okay? One. Get one game until whoever wins. Yeah. Rock, rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. I win. I'll get you next time. <laughs> hey, comment down below which you think is better, 1984 or the Martian Chronicles first line, because I'm sticking by that. I love that first line. That that would, if you were not involved in this, that would go A tier. Hmm. For sure. For sure. All right. We yeah, got Richard gets what he wants again. <laughs> we got four more until you're free from me until next week, okay? I'll have to purge this whole thing from my memory. <laughs> again, new relationship next time. Yep. It, rinse and repeat. Here we go. I almost said the book title. Let me make sure this is right. The Time Traveler, for so it will be convenient to speak of him, was expounding a recondite matter to us. Is this the book, The Time Machine? Yeah. yeah. What, gave it, what gave it away? <laughs> what gave it away? <laughs> by H.G. Wells. Yeah. Love the movie, by the way. Have you seen the original? I've, no, I've not. Not all the time. It's a good movie. It's fun. Oh, okay. it, it's just, you're very, it's a cult classic. Cult classic in that it's a, it's a bad movie that is good because it's bad? Because that's what I think of cult classics. No, no, no. It's good because of the writing and story. It's pretty good. But the visuals is really funny. Ah, uh, that's like, so that's ah, what makes was, it bad. Like campy vibes. Yeah, it's yeah. campy vibes. Yeah, yeah. However, I mean, the time machine itself actually looks pretty great. I like the look of it. It's kind of silly in concept to us today, mm. but I like the movie quite a bit. We'll take that out of your head yeah. and just judge the line. Uh, the time traveler, for so it will be convenient to speak of him, was expounding a recondite matter to us. Above three body problem? I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. Seems fair. Somewhere in that seat. Right right there in seat here. Mm-hmm. That makes sense to me. I hope you put a real stinker in here so we can put them. We got to put one in the did not subscribe list. Yeah, we, we'll see. This next one's not going to be it. Okay. I love this next line. All right. One of my favorites. It, it's up there with it's up there with the Martian Chronicles now. Which is... I'll be sure to put myself in the right frame of mind so I hate it. Expected. Expected. Here it is. And this is two sentences because it's a complete thought. Give me Got that. It. Give me that. Okay. In the beginning, the universe was created. This has been made a lot of people very angry and been widely regarded as a bad move. This is the second book in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. The Restaurant at the End of the Universe by Douglas Adams, book two of Hitchhiker. It's a good line. It's lovely. It's a good line. I, lo- um, I love it. This is one of yours. You're going to be a stickler. And here's, I'll predict this. You're going to say somewhere in B. I'm going to say somewhere in A. And then we're going to disagree. I'll give you a bottom of A. Oh, really? Yeah. Let's let's put it right next to the original Hitchhikers. I think they're they're just so good. Okay, let me but read. Ursula K. Le Guin was better. Which book was that by Ursula K. Le Guin? That was the uh, Left Hand of Darkness, right? Yeah. Want me to read that one again? Go ahead. I'll make my report as if I told a story, for I was taught as a child on my home world that truth is a matter of the imagination. That's better. That's a great line. That's better. If, but it's not better. It's a great line, but it's not better. The Hitchhiker, mm. book two, I'm going to say this again. Look, in the beginning, the universe was created. This has, been, this has made a lot of people very angry and been widely regarded as a bad move. That's funny. It gives it's you that fun. wide Look, scope. Yes. Is it funnier it's, it's than Ursula br- K. Le Guin? Well, yes. Great. But it gives you that British, doesn't give you that Pratchett vibe. It does. But Ursula K. Le Guin got it better. She has a great line there. Let's go above her. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, man. It's, it's right in that range, though. Uh, okay. Instead of arguing again, let's... Okay. Rock, paper, scissors I'll, No, no. Again. I won't even do that. I will, I will give you this one. We'll go right below Ursula K. Le Guin. But... I get the trump card in the next one. Fine. 
Mm, I like that. I like that. Power in the future. <laughs> temporary <laughs> temporary pain for long-term gain when we only have two more left. <laughs> That's probably a bad deal on my end. Probably. Uh, okay. We got two more? Mm-hmm. Here we go. No one would have believed in the last years of the 19th century that this world was being watched keenly and closely by intelligences greater than man's and yet as mortal as his own. That as men busied themselves about their various concerns, they were scrutinized and studied, perhaps almost as narrowly as a man with a microscope might scrutinize the transient creatures that swarm and multiply in a drop of water. Astir. 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 I don't want your opinion. (laughs) Astir. Just give me your thoughts, and then... Walk me back if I'm going crazy. Is that just me or is that perfectly I mean, worded? It's, it's A or S. It's what Do you is. know the book? The, uh, it's been recommended to us several times now because I know the line, but I don't know the book. That's uh, saying the line. This has not happened. That might be above Hyperion for me. I'm sorry. Mm. I, I got chills reading it. I read it again. For I me. love that. Oh, this is one line, by the way. It's it's using semicolon, so it's not saying multiple lines. We're not even cheating. This is the first sentence. <laughs> We're not cheating this time. <laughs> <laughs> Shows you our standard, right? Yeah. <laughs> so this is the, this is the first line. No one would have believed in the last years of the 19th century that this world was being watched keenly and closely by intelligences greater than man's and yet as mortal as his own. That as men busied themselves about their various concerns, they were scrutinized and studied, perhaps almost as narrowly as a man with a microscope might scrutinize the transient creatures that swarm and multiply in a drop of water. Damn, that's good. I actually now remember the book as yep. well. I did read this in high school. This is War of the Worlds. By H.G. Wells, H.G. Wells. Nailed it with and this line. I will say... That light, that last little tagline, which I think is a like in the very first sentence, I think we have a little bit of an Easter egg for people who read the book. Do you notice? So I've seen the movie, not read the book. Oh well, yeah. you'll still know. Uh, that I tagline. Should... At the oh very yeah, end. yeah, 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 uh, yes, yes, yes. Top of S. Above Hyperion. Above Hyperion. Hell, I thought I would have to argue this one with you. No, nah. that's that's masterful line. Yeah. And why is it so great to you? Well, one, it's all in one line. It, yeah, yeah. it seems like you get a lot out of this. So, you, okay, you get the date, the time period that you're in. You have the scope of how big it is. Like you already have the kind of larger scope, like something bigger is watching us. I think it's worth Which gives you really well. That emotion it gives you is a very eerie, ominous presence. Yep. Yeah. The wording. Wording is just perfect. Yeah. And how it. Uh, give give me the line. You know about why the, the it's ants. it's such a long sentence and it doesn't feel wordy. That's what's impressive about yeah. it. Because surprising. It, it's surprising. It's a paragraph long. Well, but it goes right by. Oh, specifically, yeah. what's the the word right before ants? Ants. Before ants. Tra- transitory. Uh, I I don't think there was ants in there. Let Let's, me just say it once more. Go ahead. Okay. No one would have believed in the last years of the 19th century that this world was being watched keenly and closely by intelligences greater than man's and yet as mortal as his own. That as men busied themselves about their various concerns, they were scrutinized and studied, perhaps almost as narrowly as a man with a microscope might scrutinize the transient creatures that swarm and multiply in a drop of water. Okay. Several things in there. Yeah. Busy. Uh... Busy like busy a bee, themselves. busy like busying ants. Like uh, that's the yeah, image. Busying like, ants, busy bee. Yeah, I put ants in my head of right. looking at looking at humans without like it busy saying ants, that you thought that, and then scrutinized. Like the, I already had ants, and it, he didn't need to use the word ant, yes. and yet that is instantly the first what thing I that came to mind. That put me in the, put me in the whole thing. That's great. You understand? Like yeah. The fact that he used context to give a word and not have to use it. Yeah, he didn't have to say we are ants to these alien creatures, but he just the way he described humans is like a small little ant, pesky nothing. Yeah, a worse author would say like yeah. like a small ant, right? But this one, yeah, that's yes. great. Ah, huh? oh. oh, I love it. Top of S tier. Let's Top go. S. Let's it's go. Our above Hyperion I, for me. I wish we could end on that, but we have one more. Oh, man. We have one more, okay? You ready? Is this one going in the bottom? I don't know. But you might know the first line already, okay? 
that's a sign to end the pod soon. Re- our, our stuffed animal, Red fell. <laughs> Here's the first line. When Red wins, she stands alone. Bottom tier. I feel like we got to put something there. Yeah, we'll put it there. I don't and think you anyone's know, going to be upset at us you, that much. You know what makes this fantastic? You know what, what the book is? What is it? It's our current book club of the month on Patreon. Oh, oh This is how you lose the time war. Apparently, it's an amazing book, and I'm ready to start. Apparently. We, we haven't started it yet. But it's our discussion that will happen in January, end of January. Yep. But for now, it goes into the tier of people who haven't subscribed yet. That's right. And guess what? We are still going to review it on the channel after we read it. Yep. So you'll see if our opinions change based on the first line. Starting off, not not good. Mm. Starting off real real upset at this one. We're putting that. Yeah. What Rich? Mm. What do you want to say? You know who who loved this book? It was their favorite ever. Hmm. Mads on our oh, Patreon. That's nice. I hate it. <laughs> we're, we're always. <laughs> she also she also doesn't like uh, yeah. Red Rising, and she recommended us to us uh, Arter Ben. And she's also one of the kinder ones to us who actually sent a lovely gift, and I feel like we're too mean to her in public. We are very mean to <laughs> someone who gives us money every month. <laughs> we got we to su- back. That's a surprising amount of negativity we're directing toward the kindness of others. Hey, you know what? This episode, we also were mean to people who haven't subscribed. So I think we're our Man, meanness... Are we really is- just getting our shilling out there? Or like We haven't done it for two years, asking people to subscribe, and now we're just doing it yeah. all in this video? Well, also, I don't feel like it's effective. Oh, no. I, I, I did it just for the fun of the video. Because saying, hey, please subscribe. No. Like, it, if, you li- if you like us, you're going to subscribe. Yeah. I, I, there's some weird stuff with it. Like, I, I remember like almost everyone talks about, like, oh, you need to say, like, oh, like, comment, subscribe. No. Blah, 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 blah. Eh. Eh. Nah. Eh. We get one thing. We get one thing to shill in a video. And, yeah, Patreon. Patreon. That's, that's our thing. Do that. I don't care what else you do. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike, un- uh, d- please don't. But, d- yeah, don't do that. You can if you want. Actually, yeah. Get off YouTube. Unsubscribe. Richard, as long as you do something good with the time, like unsubscribe if you're going to go do something productive in the world or read. It would be good because that whole ego thing we were talking about, Rich, Yeah. of going to the comments and confirming our biases, mm-hmm. that's unhealthy for both of us. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. It's not unhealthy for me. 